What is going on, guys? DBG here, and today, lads, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 power forwards in NBA 2K23, my team. I mean 24, my team. We're going to be talking about the guys that I think are the best at that position, purely how they play at the power forward position. It can be centers coming down or small forwards moving up. I tended to look more at centers coming down because I think most of the guys that have the ability to play small forward, like Kevin Durant, like um, Joe Smith, those type of guys are probably better to be ran at small forward and Scottie Pippen, the likes of those guys. So I think I would rather use them there. But anyway... We're going to be looking purely at how they play on power forward. And at number 10, we've got Tim Duncan. Timmy D has one major flaw, and it's that he cannot shoot at all. And it's not like a Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is a horrendous shooter, but can sometimes hit from the corners. Tim Duncan can't ever. Might be the best defensive power forward in the game. I actually think, as far as defense-wise, having used him and having used... Um, Anthony Davis, sorry, not really, not having used him, having come up against him and coming up against Anthony Davis. I hate playing Duncan more than I hate playing Anthony Davis. I just think he gets these good animations. His player build is that little bit, feels that little bit longer despite the shorter wingspan. It's just offensively, he's poor. He's very poor. Post game's not what it should be. Can't do much in offense. And number nine, we got Draymond. Draymond is, his release isn't good. He's slow. It's a slow release, and the problem is that Draymond becomes a hundred times better when he gets a duo with Steph. Like Diamond Draymond, I think you would go four spots higher on this list. The problem is, is that Amethyst Draymond is meh. Diamond Draymond super. Amethyst Draymond is average. So so average. So that's why he's down in here at number nine. It's just that he's very solid. You could get him for free for a while. He's not like he's 100k VC if you want to buy him now. It's the most expensive thing in the world. But I wouldn't spend 100. I wouldn't spend 25 quid on Draymond Green. I didn't at the time. And I definitely wouldn't now. But then we have got Chris Webber. Chris Webber is another one that like just don't lock in from. Don't lock in for any of these three guys, by the way. Like you're looking at AD without a jump shot. You're looking at um, meh. And you're looking at pretty good. Uh, he's got that speed, doesn't have the defense, his release is completely fine, I don't think it's great, he moves quite well with the ball for a power forward, good rebounder, will hit shots from the corner, will run fast, offensively he's just, I think he's enough better on offense without, and he feels not that much worse defense than the Draymond, but again, this is a guy that nobody should lock in, like, of even of all the like 2k day guys, he is the worst, he most definitely is the worst. Then we got Abaka. Abaka is literally like your poor man's AD slash Duncan. He's got that 64 speed, which isn't great. His jump shot post-patch, though, is iffy. Like, pre-patch, I was hitting consistently with Abaka. Post-patch, I'm not hitting at all with Serge Abaka. Price-wise, he's not too bad at 63k. But he's got a lot of great goal badges as far as, like, his defense goes. Will rebound well, will block shots really well. I think he's an all-around solid player. Steel rating low, though. But in here at number seven is completely fine. At six, we're going to go Giannis Antetokounmpo. And I actually think he's way, way better at the center position. Like, if you look at this Giannis Antetokounmpo card right here, it's the big problem is the jump shot. Some guys are super consistent with that jump shot. I'm not one of those guys. I bought him day one on the, my account. He is really freaking good. But for me, I'm just like he is there's a lot of really good things about Giannis and there's a lot of really not great things about Giannis Antetokounmpo but he just feels really good I prefer him at center but he's definitely almost top five and number five we got day one NBA series one award Bam out of bio he is expensive don't get me wrong like this guy is like a hundred and something euro to buy don't be an idiot and buy him right now but he does have to be at this point on the list Low steel rating, which isn't great, but his speed's pretty decent. His jump shot's nice. Post patch is not quite as good. Defensively, he's going to be good with that half anchor. 6'9", that power four position. Decent popper. Like, he is an all-around good card. I'm telling the lads, he is a good, good card. Then at number four, we got Kemp. And this is where, the, like, the gap comes in. I think Kemp is spectacular. Like, Kemp with Evo, he stays the same tier, but... He goes up in quite a, quite a few important stats, including pass accuracy, and he gets half pogo stick. Problem is, his defense isn't really there. 
Good shooter from the corners will dunk it really well. Might be the best dunker in the game. The defense just isn't there like you would hope out of a power forward, especially when you look at the guys who are numbers one, two, and three on this list. I think just that he has to go to number four. And then honestly, I don't know why I said that. Number three is not a great defender either, and it's Blake. Blake is very comparable defensively to a Sean Kemp. Dunking-wise, he is very comparable. Defensive-wise, neither of them are great. Blake just has that little bit better ball handle. He's got that be bit better pass accuracy. He's that bit faster. His dribble style is that little bit better. He's got better dribble moves. Size-wise, they're basically the same. I think Blake is just that tiny bit better than Kemp. But I think the top two are so far ahead of the rest of the power forward position. And I'm going to put Chris Bosch at number two. Chris Bosch, if he had a release that I could green more, he would be number one. Chris Bosch is, has got a good block. Rebounds the ball super well. Decent in the post, but post game doesn't really matter. He's tall. He can pop really well. Nice at center. Very nice at um, power forward. Probably definitely better at power forward. But a really, really good card. Like Chris Bosch. The thing with Chris Bosch, though, is just he's got everything. Just that release is so iffy. Like, I didn't mind Chris Bosch's release in other years. I hate it this year. Like, last year's Chris Bosch. Trying to think, did I even have, did I have a Chris Bosch card last year? Like, I know I had the Invincible, but that one didn't really count. Like, the shades of Chris Bosch, for me, I felt, it always felt like he shot the ball a hundred times better than this Chris Bosch did. But, this Chris Bosch is still a really good player. But he cannot be number one. He just can't. The number one at that power forward position is just too good. And it's Anthony Davis. So I didn't get the hype initially. You'll see it. I tweeted out so one of my bad takes. And I'll put my hand up and admit I'll be wrong. Like I think I'm right more often than I'm wrong. But it's close to 50-50. When it comes to stuff in this game. And one of the worst takes I ever made was saying that Sean Kemp was way better than this guy. AD is just next level. His defense, his ability to... Like he can guard Shaq or he can guard the perimeter. Lateral quickness, a lie. 43 steal, a lie. His jump shot, 74 three ball, a lie. Post patch, a little bit more difficult to use, but I will still say it. AD by... AD and Bosch by quite a significant amount. Because I think you can argue Bosch over AD... I think mean, you can't argue anyone else over AD. And this is coming from somebody that initially didn't think AD was that good. And I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I hate admitting I'm wrong. But when I'm going to gloat when I'm right, I have to admit when I'm wrong. And I was incredibly wrong with this take about Anthony Davis. What an incredible, incredible card.